Ah, that smell. What's going on everyone? Welcome back. I am sweating from just moving that trailer around and getting that sled out of there, but we are cooling down. My fans are doing their job. Today, I wanted to start taking apart uh, Betty White, which is what I call her. Uh, I'm gonna take all the suspension off. I'm gonna put it all back to stock. Um, again, because I have to turn this all back to stock before I trade it in. So today, I wanted to tackle the suspension. I don't know if I'll get it all done. I actually have to have uh, go out for dinner, meet a couple of my buddies uh, for some quick food in about an hour. So I'm gonna see how much I can get done. Um, this is pretty cut and dry. It's not too hard, but I still wanted to go over it and uh, let you guys know. They're pretty simple. Uh, Polaris does a really good job of <clears throat> keeping the same wrench sizes for a lot of parts. I mean, like a lot of parts. A 15 millimeter on these gets you a very, very long way, which is nice, so you don't have to keep running back. So I'm gonna go over that and uh, let you guys know exactly what it is. Uh, these are a little tricky with the, with the under, uh, under seat one, because you gotta actually pull the seat, pull this out. So we're gonna get to that. I'm gonna tackle the front though. The fronts are, uh, again, they're pretty cut and dry. Uh, the one little the one little trick is there's this little tab in here right there that you gotta pull out so you can get the bolt through. So, um, <clears throat> obviously, start with the side panels. I think it's still unlatched from uh, one of my last videos. So, voila. Put that over there. Let's see here. So you just put your hand in there that way. There, see that one up there? And you just gotta work it through. You might need a screwdriver to Nope. See? See, so pop that out, and then uh, same thing on the other side, too. So I always put everything in the ski while I'm working on it so I know it doesn't go anywhere. Is this side undone, too? Nope. Pop that side off. Check out all that pretty stuff. This side, you can really see it. So, uh, this one right here. So just get on in there. Popped out. So. I'm gonna get some tools for this, and uh, I'm pretty sure they're, they're, everything's 15, so let me just go check. 15. 15. 15. And 15. Now, if I would've tackled this uh, last winter, I would know exactly what everything is, but kind of a little rust. So I got myself 15, 15. We're just gonna go ahead and break these loose and uh, start moving things along here. Now the up top, I use two 15s. I forget, see? Forgot about it. Someone's Hi. World, this is my sister, Christina. Oh my God, I'm like in the worst. <laughs> How did I ever? This is one of my workout partners and one of my other partners in crime. Hello, I don't YouTube. know. What, I don't know what she's doing here. Hiding. Nash, you protecting me? Yes. Yeah? Scary, big, big scary, mean one. Come here, Nash, you poop. <clears throat> See? Inner tubes, he does listen. He does, little boy. Little baby. Too bad we didn't bring Ellie. I'm handing the camera over to Christina so I can get these shocks out for you guys. So while we were in the break and she was talking to me about a couple of things, I just broke everything loose. So pretty much, you're gonna pull everything off, pull them out top. You can get in way closer than that. This one, you just gotta mess with it and get your get the nut off. The bolt's gonna sit in there for now. Try not to drop anything, because then they all go bye-bye. But, yeah, so the bottom one, you just pop out, pull it out. You gotta move the A-arms around a little bit. That'll pop out like so. Now watch, because these do have bushings, and then the top one, come on this side. So you're gonna put your finger in that hole. And you're just gonna, well actually, no, I forgot. You're gonna work it through. That's why that comes out. And I always keep that one in there because it's a pain in the butt. Oh, that's right, and then. Did that just go off? Yeah, and it's just that. Oh, okay. And then the top, that's right, the top of these have a bushing that comes out. They go back in the stock ones. I don't remember, I know Fox has these push-in bushings, and I don't remember what the stock ones look like. I'm gonna go grab one. So yeah, stock ones do have 
bushings as they're stuck on in there. So just be careful of the bushings when they pop out and then obviously go to the other side, do the other side and then reverse the order and put them all back in. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna tackle the front and then go after the rear here soon. That's it. So now I got both front foxes off. Um, these are actually gonna be going on my new sled, my VR1. That's uh, the same, the matrix and the axis are the same front ends. So they're gonna bolt right up, so that's good. So those are gonna go on that, so those are not for sale. No, I got both of my bushings for the top. And uh, as far as the front end, it'll just hang there. Uh, it'll hang from your sway bar. And uh, look, so just like that. So again, just uh, you know, put your top bushing back in and then reinstall, which is what we're gonna do right now. We of course have Foreman Nash. Nash is currently at the beach in Key West enjoying some sun in a pina colada. So I'm a little jealous of him. So now we're just gonna go ahead and tackle this other side. So now we got both fronts back in. Uh, there is no left or right side. I didn't specify that. So there is no left or right side. So we got them back in. I'm just gonna tighten them up. And like I said, we're gonna tackle the rear. So this is a little bit more intricate, but again, I'll get to that here shortly. So obviously the back is a little bit trickier. When you're first looking at it, you're like, oh, well that's, you know, this bolt and nut is right there. But then you go and you look up there and it's like, hmm, how do I get to that? So uh, briefly, uh, you have to, if you have a Pro S, these came factory. Um, if you have it added on, you gotta take that off. Once you get that off, we'll get down to the seat and then you gotta take the tank and then you can lift that all up and get to the other bolt. So to get this off, there's actually two um, T40 Torx bits. If you can see them all the way in the back there. They go into the seat and then there's two like push, push, uh, push in pins there that hold it in. So you start with the Torx bits and go from there. So just like that. So you have again, two Torx bolts, T40s, and then these two push, I'm not really sure what you call them. They're push, push lock pins, I guess. They go up into uh, the bottom of your seat, right up there. So now we have to tackle these little 10 millimeter bolts holding the seat on. So now that we have uh, both of those 10 millimeter nuts off, your seat will go just like that, up and back. And voila, seat off. Next step, we are moving and grooving here. So now you could see it and you could get to it, but you still can't slide the bolt out. So you actually have to take this 10 millimeter bolt so you can lift your tank up to get in there. And I believe that these are all 15s again as well. 15, 15, 15, and 15. Like I said earlier, uh, players did a really good job about keeping everything the same size. So you don't have to, you know, have your entire toolbox out to, to get anything done. So now that's out, now your tank will up now. Got some fuel in there. So I'm gonna break all these loose, I'm gonna get all the nuts off, and then I'm gonna yank that out. So once you get all your nuts off and everything like that, um, I always start with this back bolt because it makes it a little bit easier. These weird articulation uh, rear suspensions, you actually got to I grab on this rear brace and put my knee on the back bumper. And I just lift it up and it'll come right out. So you do that. Now that's free. Um, this also has a bushing in it. So don't lose that. That's for the rear. And then on the front up here, all you got to do is just Lift the tank so you can get your hand under there and it should come out. Like so. so now this one doesn't have a bushing. So now our rear suspension's out. Or rear shock, I should say. So it is a uh, little time consuming. Not too bad though, um, just to get to that that one bolt, that's the only one that's a real pain. Obviously, do it in reverse. 
I also just realized that my rear shocks for this are up in my storage up there with all of my other snowmobile stuff, which is gets put there after winter time. So it's out of the way and all organized. But I don't know if I'm gonna have enough time to finish this before I gotta to go to dinner. So maybe I'll just try and get that out of there and get that down for now. So now that I found my ladder that I was looking for, I'll show you guys my storage room. So up here we have um, a lot of snowmobile stuff. So we have exhaust, clearly. Uh, Fox shocks. This is my snowmobiling bid that I bring up north with me. It's got tools, parts, and uh, there's all my skis. So, ooh, someone used to be a ski rider. So I'm going to carry down a bunch of these parts so I can keep putting this back together. <laughs> So we got, here's the uh, straight line performance head pipe that I ran last year that I already took off. And then, in one of these boxes, okay, yes. stock rears, factory rears. Eat. Come on, where are you? There you are. This is the one we need for now. So, I had a room on my table. So on the factory ones, you have a bushing on this one that goes up there and then your rear bushing out of the other one. So we're gonna reverse all the steps and put it back in. And voila, just like that, we're all back together on the rear end. So for uh, this bag, put in the push pins before you do the other ones. <clears throat> if not, you'll be doing it backwards and uh, you'll be stuck there for a while. So it is 6.40 and I gotta go to dinner. So I'm gonna head out, I'm gonna go get dinner and then I'll probably wrap up this uh, <clears throat> front track shock when I get back, so stay tuned. So a couple, hour late, a couple hours later, like 14, 15, 16 hours later, we're uh, back in the garage. Dinner ended up taking too, uh, longer than I expected and I didn't want to come back out here at 11, 12 o'clock at night to finish it up. So we are done with the front end, we're done with the rear, uh, the rear shock, and now we are coming into what I call the center shock. Um, this is another kind of little tricky one. So. Pretty much you start with taking the bogey wheels off. So these front ones gotta come off. They're two 10, mill 10 millimeter bolts. They go and then the bolt for the bottom is right behind it over here. Um, what I always do is I take the limiter strap, not, I don't, not off, but I undo it up at the top one up there. Um, remember where it is. Most of the time it's gonna be marked, but just for, you know, just in case there's not a mark on it, you can't figure it out. Make sure to mark what hole it is. So when you do take it off, um, you know which one to go back. So we're gonna take that, take the bogey wheels off, take the limiter strap off, um, so this can, you know, move up and down. The suspension can move up and down. And then we gotta get the top bolt out, which I believe are two 15s, and then the bottom bolts, which are, I believe, 13s. <laughs> Just like that, we now have the center shock out. This one also has a bushing up top, so make sure to remember that. And then always remember how all this comes apart. So you're gonna have, at least on this, you know, these sleds, you have your two plastic sleeves, you have your rod that goes through, and your two washers or spacers, and then another bushing. And I don't know 
The factory ones, yeah, this is a fox bush, and the factory one has its own. So that's pretty much it. We got the factory one here. It has everything in it still, all zip tied in. Also, again, brand new. So I'm gonna reverse this and slap this all back in there. Um, sometimes when you go to get, so these are 13 millimeter bolts that hold the, uh, that are for the bottom. Sometimes it's a, it's a spinning shaft between the two of them. There's probably a technical term for it. I don't know what it is. And sometimes you could play back and forth. You get one loose and then it'll just go and it'll just keep playing back and forth. So sometimes you do have to put a pair of uh, channel locks in there to hold down on the, on the shaft from spinning and then it'll work its way out. I got lucky this time and they both just popped out. So that might be the second time and of all the times that I've done this that it's actually worked that way. So uh, I got lucky today. So I'm gonna th slam this thing back in there and I mean, pretty much suspension wise, it's gonna be all wrapped up. And I almost forgot, there are actually washers that go between the inside of the rail in here and this, and the shaft. So it's uh, like a spacer washer. Uh, I forgot to mention that before. They're a little bit of a pain in the butt to get in there, but they're not too terrible. <laughs> So now all the bolts holding the shock are back in. Now it's time to uh, put the limiter strap back on. So um, this can get tricky at times. So pretty much what I do, and I'm lucky enough to have the stand. So what I'll do is I'll lower the, the sled back down and I'll put a piece of, honestly, most of the time it's firewood. I put it right underneath the center, pretty much right underneath the shock. Lower it all the way down, it'll compress the suspension up so you have a bunch of, uh, throw in this strap and it's easy to put back on. And all that is left for here are to put the bogey wheels back on. So I'm gonna slap them back on. I'm gonna come back up front. I'm gonna put my little rubber plugs back in and honestly, that's it. So one step closer to getting this thing back to stock, back to factory so I could trade it in. This is the way that I do it. Whether it's right or wrong, who knows? I didn't go to school for it. I don't think there's a book on how to do it. This is how I do it. This is how it works. I'm sure there is 10 other ways to skin this cat, but that is it. That is how I change the shocks on a Pro S with, uh, I can't think of the uh, rear suspension this is called. It'll come to me. But that is how I change it. I hope it helps some of you guys. If you guys were wondering kind of tips and tricks on how to do it, that's it. So I appreciate you guys following along and I will see you guys in the next one. Make sure to like and subscribe this video. See ya.